which what is this series <laughs> called i don't know yeah that's i, I don't know what are um, we here for what are we here for that's a great question why don't we start with something simpler which is what have you been thinking about in your research lately i've been thinking about with uh with brandon and sophie i've been thinking about these things called dynamic operads and dynamic categories and stuff like that okay uh imagine i'm a category theorist yeah. what's the what's the sales pitch uh well there's the so what that's asking like what do category theorists care about that this is about i think yeah. um one thing they might care about is like enriching like categories or operads or multi-categories or whatever in some other thing so brandon has this uh this theory of enrichment where it's like oh you want to enrich uh monoidal double category, then you're going to need a, a duoidal, monoidal, you know, duoidal triple category or something. You know, he has like yeah. a thing where you tell him what you want to enrich and he'll tell you the thing you need to enrich in. Um, okay. So that's kind of cool. And what we're enriching in is this category org um, in our particular case for these dynamic, because what we're trying to do is basically often you see like string diagrams, but they're mm -hmm. in some fixed form, like, oh, here's the wiring pattern. But I wanted something where what's flowing through those wires somehow like changes the wiring diagram. And okay. so we're enriching in something that lets us do that. Okay. So this reminds me of some work you did with me about um like these the dills that yeah, or, what was it? Yeah, about like dynamic dynamic rewiring, I think. Dynamic rewiring, it. exactly. Yeah. Um so how does this relate to that for anyone who's it read is, about that? Right. So I had I I had this thing called org and you and I wrote this paper about like deep learning uh, and and like ways that that could be um, not improved because we didn't have any ideas, but like expanded about like, you know, where there was room to change things. And in that work, it was like we had um, in deep learning, you have like these little systems that are listening to each other. And we were saying, oh, it's like a teacher who's like listening to the students and all the students are like shouting a number None of the mm -hmm. students can interact. And the, the teacher is like, okay, well, you're smart and you're stupid. So I'm going to take what you say and wait it, blah, blah, blah. But then when the teacher receives a response, like some loss or reward or whatever, then they update how much they trust each of those students. And mm -hmm. so what's flowing through the wires there are these like guesses about what we should do or the number and what's being, but that's being updated. The wiring pattern itself is like changing based on what's flowing. So whatever they said, changed it. So it's like that. It's just that like deep learning is now one case of um, something we now have four cases of, which is like this kind of fractal version of, of that story. Okay, and what are the four cases? Yeah, so it's fractal in that like if you have a bunch of gradient descenders and you put them together, you get another gradient descender. You don't get a different sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, now, so deep learning is one of the four cases. The second one that I did with Brandon was prediction markets. So there you've got like, lots of little dudes in your head that are telling you like what what they think the outcome is going to be and they each have some wealth or trust level hmm. so you you have, you have these dudes in your head telling you what they all think then you okay. make a guess but you and I are on a team and you have some relative wealth compared to me or some relative trust and we okay. also do that so it's kind of this fractally thing we're just little dudes in another guy's we're head. just little dudes in some other head Okay. Um, and so uh, when we so but our level of trust is updated based on what happens. So that's, again, where the kind of the wiring pattern, it's really like the interaction pattern that forms the higher level thing is updated. So we have those are two prediction markets, deep learning. Then with uh, Sophie, we have heavy and learning, which is like spike de spike time dependent plasticity, which is a neuroscience thing that says like uh, fire together, what cells that fire together, wire together like more seriously what it is is that if you fire one second before me then i think oh you must have understood like i celebrate some like goal scored in the soccer match but like one second ago you were already like celebrating well then probably you like saw it coming before i did and yeah. so i wired you um so we have right. a system of those things like this things that wired to things that just said what i'm saying now so that's heavy in learning and the fourth one is non-cooperative strategic games. So we took Matteo Capucci's stuff from his ACT talk about the Nash Aider and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and showed that that's again, this kind of fractal thing where if you have, um, you can build larger players from smaller players in a, in, and the way they update based on what happens is like kind of fractal in the same way. Okay, is that you wrote a blog post about that, right? Or Brandon? Uh, Brandon wrote a blog post about that, yeah. 
we're moving um, into blog posts because they're just faster and like there's just yeah. a lot to say in these in this stuff and we're not it's not quite complete and like sorry well the, the some things feel like we can just kind of like say oh we've got another one we've got another one um so tell me about what's this org structure that you're enriching things in to get all of this then yeah so org is a um monoidal double category its objects are polynomials polynomial functors mm -hmm. um its vertical or like strong morphisms are maps of polynomial functors uh and its horizontal morphisms are what are interesting so if you have p and q oh the tensor product is like what's called the dirichlet product of polynomials okay. so it's like putting things in parallel but okay what's interesting is if i have p and q what are the kind of weak arrows between them or the pro arrows or like the ones with the ticks on yeah. horizontal arrows however you, yeah so what are those that is going to be a there's a category of those an object in that category is um an inner hom pq co-algebra it's a thing that outputs interaction patterns between p and q ways of putting p wired up into q okay the dynamical system that outputs those and inputs what's flowing on the wires, the outputs of P, what's going out of P, and what's coming into Q. Okay, so it's exactly, Amara, it's exactly the thing that tells you how to update your wiring. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So okay. when you have something enriched in this thing, it's as though every everybody in your category is labeled with a polynomial mm. that tells its input output type. And the HOM set is not just a set, it's a it's set a equipped with an update thingy that says or like that says for any element of the set here's the wiring pattern between p and q that you are saying mm -hmm. and given something that's flowing here's how you update an element of your set of morphisms so it's like this set of morphisms with a with a dynamic on, on it um oh no okay so so what i was going to ask uh not to to put you on the spot but like you recently wrote another blog post about pr proly polynomial functors mm -hmm. i think um, everything you're saying now is in terms of poly still um yeah. Have you thought much about like, is there any relation between this this new stuff you're thinking about yeah. with poly, which from what I gather generalizes poly in some way, yeah. and this kind of um, org stuff? Basically, poly fits into poly as a full subcategory, just okay. like sets fit into categories as a full subcategory. Set maps into cat. Um, is it so when you say like that? Is it really it, like? It, it is true. It is that that is the case. Yeah. And um, so what that means is that all the org stuff still makes sense in Prawley. It's okay. just that Prawley, uh, instead of a set of positions, like a set of um, outputs and a set of inputs, you have a whole category or you have, the, you have room for a whole category there. Okay, so you've got these, these four nice examples that you've talked about of this um, structure. What's, what's kind of the goal? I mean, is the goal to find more examples? I would really like to find yeah, I, I mean, on some level, these are fractal in the sense that, like, if you have a bunch of predictors, you get another predictor. If you have a bunch of, um, if you have enough, a bunch of deep learners, you get another deep learner, or whatever. Okay. And that's cool because I'm like, well, physics is the same everywhere, so whatever like we're trying to find shouldn't change based on it, like when you kind of group things together. Yeah. But at another guess... level, it's weird because like there is something called individuality and it does matter and I don't really get it. So like, there's this tension in my mind between mm -hmm. wanting things that like, it doesn't matter where you put the grouping, you get the same thing versus things where it really does matter. But I guess like stuff, even in physics, and I speak here as someone who isn't a physicist, like things break down at scales, right? Like things are the same until they get really small or really yeah. fast. That's yeah. my- Yeah, uh, that's a good point, point. yeah. So, so like maybe it's the same thing that you know like um okay what about what next sorry have i asked you this or not no i feel yeah, like what, what, i didn't what, say i didn't answer yeah i do want to understand i want to understand like compression like let's say you had this like a bunch of like compressors for example mm -hmm. that it, like the kolmogorov complexity of things or like in math we're looking for simplicity right we're, we have all these phenomena and we're like ah if i just say it in this way then i can compress a huge amount of what's going on and get the real meat of it and same so with like, in language or whatever. Okay. Do you mean like, are these like inherently lossy compressors or are they meant to be perfect? They're, they're losing only the like fully entropic stuff, like the stuff that isn't, um, you know, like what I'm saying right now, I might say it again, but I might say it with a different tone of voice or my hair might be in a different form or something. And it loses all the stuff that you don't care about or that like, okay. in the sense that like, oh, it could have been arbitrary. I wasn't paying attention to that. 
but what is here like like um when some social theorist or some biologist or whatever they look at some phenomena and they're like okay in all these cases there's a bunch of stuff changing but here's something i can like compress out and say mm -hmm. definitively about this case and like we seem to just constantly do that as a species is like, like name things and like compress them so that we can select based on like the deep structure and not the stuff we don't care about and so yeah. i want to see like something that like could just look at the activity inside of itself and, out, and outside of itself on its boundary or something and like say oh i see this is what we're doing and and like state it or something and then like all the guys inside would be like oh that's what we're doing okay okay and like okay. then they would learn better what they were up to and then they would send that like downward and up maybe both ways i don't know yeah. so what is compression why do we keep doing it why why do i want to say things succinctly and like when i do that what does it what value does it bring to the system yeah i think it's also i think it's a really interesting point as well of like i understand compression as a really useful thing when you think of communication as a i read recently somewhere that the the phrase that like communication is just a cooperation game like it's a way for us to coordinate ourselves um and i think in this sense um compression is a really useful thing to have but i also think it's interesting to question when it's not a useful thing to have. I think so many of like, I think what people are calling the representability crisis in machine learning and in AI um, and all of this kind of stuff comes from the fact that once you've compressed stuff down into data, that's like inherently an irreversible process. And your choice in what compression means therefore shapes everything further down the pipeline. And there is no way of recovering that at all. And it's somehow, you know, it's this problem of like, you can have the best everything in the world but if the way you collect data is bad you you're not going to get anything good out of it um, that's right yeah yeah but there's also like this thing about it didn't doesn't work so like right now we think oh let's just compress everything in like in a gradient descendy kind of way mm -hmm. and then we're like you know let's try this out in society and it, these things are making their way out into society and we're like hey this sucks like facebook is like ruining stuff or whatever thing we want to say and um, there's a sense in which like it's a bad compression or it's like the algorithm is not really working with the living world. It's not helping what life is trying to do or something and like, or human life or whatever. And so human life is like rejecting it or part of us. We're like, hey, this isn't good for us. Mm -hmm. um, and so like in a compression scheme, like you, you try something and it does compress it, but it doesn't compress the right things. Mm -hmm. And then like the larger system is supposed to like communicate into that like smaller box this compression is not the useful one. It isn't like a lossless thing. Hmm. It, but in category theory and math, like we do want to have these thoughts that last like thousands of years, like we're like two. And then we're like, you know, the ancient Greeks are like, I know what you mean. Yeah, um, we, st we still get that. We still get it. So like, like we're trying to find compressions in category theory or math in general that are like, don't lose that, don't lose much. Like hmm. you don't need, all of that simplex you just need its combinatorial aspects or you know you do, what what do we actually need of this um and so i think there's some hope that like there are good compressions i don't know why there should be i agree like like why should there be good compressions but it kind of seems like category theory and math are like good compressions again speaking about something I, I don't really know about but i feel like i've read before that for compression algorithms in like the real computer using a computer definition word of a compression algorithm to like make a file smaller, that if you have a lossless compression algorithm, then there always exist strings on which the compression algorithm will actually increase the size. Like you can either pick lossless or always make smaller, you know, and you can never have both. Yeah. Um, and like- I want a different that... criteria. I'll, I want another criteria instead. Okay, like um, what? Which is that like with PKs, or we used to call it PK zip when I was a kid, you can't use it. You can't use it until you unzip it. Hmm. Whereas like a compression like um, functor of like this huge idea, I can just use it like in my life. I can just say functor and I know what I mean. I don't have to decompress every time. It would be nice to find compressions that are that are functional in the sense that like you don't need to unpack them in, in order to to work okay. with them. It's yeah, it's like if I'm at a restaurant and I've got like a shipment comes in, comes in from like this um, truck, that's like hmm. this compression. It's all like in there. I take it out. Yes, I have to kind of decompress it, but I can still leave it in the box of lettuce and the box of things. Now, I, later, like that's a nice compression. Then later, I want it to like use it more. 
I, I, I could either, I could like move the boxes around in the refrigerator room or whatever. That doesn't affect what's in the boxes. I can mm -hmm. like trade them and understand that's lettuce and that's the meat or whatever. Later, I take it out and I take, I have a bag of lettuce and I bring that up to the front or whatever. I worked at McDonald's as a kid. And, um, and like, you know, you have that bag of lettuce is still compressed. And in category theory, you're constantly doing that. Like I have a monoidal category. Do you need to know what it is in order to know like what a lax functor out of it is? You know, like, you don't okay. need to always unpack every envelope all the way down to the set theory. Okay. Some of so it a good compression should be like that, like will, ready to be used without being all the way unpacked. Okay. Yeah. Some of it feels to me like kind of like all you have to do is type check stuff. And if things type check, you're good to go. You don't actually care about what your values are at any point. You're just saying like, does this cohere? Does this make sense? Yeah. And, and then when it, about, do I want lettuce here or not? You know, right. that's kind of the... Sub in question. the end, in the end, it has to all, all compile down to atoms moving through space. Like if I say, please pass the salt, that's an amazing compression that like can go into your brain and like that is wild. It tells what chemicals to do stuff. And yeah, make, like at the end, like your 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 um cells are producing like gene like genes are being read that make proteins mm -hmm. that contract cells and stuff like that. Like oh, like yeah. until you know ten to the fifteen atoms move through space and like salt crystals appear it's an amazing yeah. compression in the end it has to compile to actual atoms moving through space yeah um, which is something i think mathematicians don't care about enough um your paper has to be the sort of thing that makes other people's brains change otherwise it didn't do yeah. anything and maybe it should even like in act it should even make like atoms get moved so like if you sent all the textbooks on earth into space like you wouldn't get something that learned like nothing would learn those things they land on mars and they just like decay or whatever yeah like, it's you think you send our dna like that doesn't do anything you need the yeah. reason you need the mom to like like turn that into something yeah there's um, some active participation that needs to be some shared attention some kind of like share some yeah something has to be yeah um okay do you want to get yeah. back on some little any more maths things about like these dynamic categories and stuff. Like, are there any like really nitty gritty category theory things you'd think you'd like to say using the word operad maybe or not? Yeah, I think th these are multi-category. When we say dynamic X, we need it mean mm. X enriched in org. So dynamic okay. category, dynamic multi-category, like it. Um, deep learning turns out to be a dynamic prop. It's got like, okay, or, or dynamic uh, monoidal category, but it only like, all the objects are generated by a single object. Okay. Um, like under under tensor. Or mm -hmm. but anyway, what am I saying? All I'm saying is like uh, a um, the prediction market one I think was a dynamic operad. Um, okay. the heavy and learning one I think was a dynamic operad. But like we have dynamic, we have examples of dynamic categories, operads, but like multi categories, okay. et cetera. Okay. Anyway, they're all just thingies enriched in org. Um, okay, so it's been great chatting to you. Thanks for uh telling Thanks, me a yeah. bit about yeah or, uh, and we'll hope to hear or read from you soon i guess thanks <laughs>